And talk, talking about mercy, I found several attributes of God's mercies from scriptures. I'll just go through a few of them. Let me quickly say that the principal attribute of God's mercy is that it overrules all judgment. That is the first and principal attribute of mercy. Mercy overrules all judgment. Doesn't matter the accusation or the conviction. When mercy appears, all will dissolve. There are many judgments hanging on your head that you may not be aware of right now. Places where people have gone to obtain judgment over you and you are not aware. And once judgment is obtained, either you are aware or not, law enforcers come to enforce the judgment. That's why it seems some people are suffering of what they know nothing about. Somebody somewhere had gone to obtain judgments. And the enforcers are now at work. Certain people, when they obtain judgments against you, is by virtue of what you have done wrong to them. But certain people obtain judgments out of no reason at all against you. So in the same way that people go to court to report others, there are places in the realms of the spirit where people could report you. And without your knowing, judgment has been enforced over there and you are serving the punishment. Maybe the accusation against you or oh, at those places were true, maybe they were not true. Most times they are not even true. But judgments have been obtained. And now, innocent people are suffering of what they do not know nothing about. That's why you hear every time, how come that bad things happen to good people? You have heard it many times. Bad things happen to good people. Some of the reasons because judgments have been obtained against those innocent people not knowing. You want me to pray for you? Raise your right hand to heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, <laughs> I decree over your life, you will not suffer punishments for offenses that you know nothing about anymore. Amen. If that prayer makes a minute to you, shout a louder amen now. go to the court of law and you hear barristers stand before the judge saying to the judge to temp, temper, temper justice with mercy. Even though this man is worthy of this punishment, but use your authority to show mercy. God will show mercy to you. We are the corner of God's mercy. It's actually a mighty privilege under God to have anointed this place as the place of mercy. No matter wherever any judgment is standing against in the physical courts of law or in any spiritual court of law, the mercy of God will overrule all such judgments over your life. The mercy of God is actually higher than the heavens. <laughs> I love that one. Psalm 108, 
Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise, even with my glory. Awake, sultry and half. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. That's why you should praise God in church. Don't say me, I don't know. I know how to praise my God. I praise him in my house. Praise him in church. Among the people. And I will sing praises unto thee, unto thee among the nations. For, for thy mercy is great above the heavens. And thy truth reacheth unto the cloud. I was shocked this day I saw the scripture. That is something that is higher than heaven. It is the mercy of God. That simply means God's mercies has everything in subjection. Everything under heaven is under the authority of God's mercy. What other attributes can we find? <laughs> I find in the book of Exodus, it says, it says, if you have magnified your mercy to me. So I found that mercy can be magnified. It can increase. Many of us have enjoyed God's mercies thus far. From this month, it shall be magnified in your life. Not to waste too much enumerating the very many numbers of its attributes let me quickly move because of time to a very vital factor of the trigger of mercy Since God is merciful unto all but God is not arbitrary there are certain things must be in place for you to enjoy his blessings especially his mercy so you don't look at other people and think that God just loves them specially and is showing them more mercy than yourself. No. It is something you need to know that will always draw and magnetize God's mercy in your life every time. It is a pure heart. Second Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9. Second sixty nine. He says, "For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole. He see everybody, everybody running to and fro, everybody to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore, from henceforth thou shalt have wars." What is he talking about? God is so strong and mighty. How many agree to that? He said he wants to show himself strong. And he's strong and mighty. But why is it you are not able to magnetize that strength to work for you? It is something he's looking out for. That is the magnet of his mercy. And what is that? The person whose heart is perfect towards him. A perfect heart is the magnet of God's mercy. Not in shout in praise, not in singing in church, not in shout in prayer. If you do all those ones, they are okay, good service. But if their heart is not perfect, that effort is fruitless. The heart. That is where everything sums up. The heart. The eyes of the Lord is running around every, throughout the whole earth. He wants to help somebody. He wants to show mercy. He wants to show himself strong but it is the heart that he's checking to qualify any man or any woman to enjoy the awesomeness of his power. Your heart. 
And the reason why this is so important is that nobody else knows your heart. You don't even know the heart of the next person to you now. I've seen people who are friends for 15 years, best friends. And the other, and the one is the greatest enemy of the other one. They didn't know for 15 years. The heart. The heart of man. The Bible says it is deep. It is, it's, it's, it's desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know it? The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You can't know it. You can't know it. I can't know your heart. You can smile at me, but I can't know your heart. But God is looking because it, only he searches the heart. The psalmist says, you alone search the heart and you know the reins. So he searches. He knows what is there now. He knows what was there three minutes ago. He even know, is capable of knowing what you are about to think about. You can't deceive him. That is why mercy is far from many. There is a hatometer that God used to check the heart. When he finds it perfect, even if you are an ant, you will destroy an elephant. The moment he finds that perfect one there. The strength of my confidence is the purity of my motive. The motive is what God alone can see in the heart. Mine is pure 1,000% of the time. He knows. That's why I can't be pushed down. You know what the kukute? If you know what the kukute? Kukute is a stump, a tree that is growing, and you cut. It remains a stump. If you are shaking kukute, it's yourself you are shaking. <laughs> Anybody shaking you from today will shake themselves to finish. For the eyes of the Lord, the Lord runs to and fro throughout. No place is hidden. Throughout the whole earth, seeking to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards. That's what he's looking for, perfect heart. When God has found that in place, he will show you plenty of his mercy. Matthew chapter 5 is talking about the Beatitudes from verse 1, the various blessed, blessed, blessed. Then he goes to verse 8. And he says, Blessed are the pure in heart. Can you imagine that? Can anybody ever be pure in this world? You can't be pure in your ways, but you can be pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Do you know what it means to see God? See God. See. You, you think it's when we get to heaven that's about. I used to think that one day says that it means keep your heart pure. One day, one day, when you get to heaven, you will see God. No, 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 no. It is here. Here. If your heart is pure, you will see God. <laughs> you will perceive him. You will see God. You will see him in action. You will see God. You will see him fight to finish all your enemies. You will see God if your heart is pure. If your heart is pure, you will see God. You will see his mercy. You will enjoy the goodness of his mercy if your heart is pure. I don't know whether you remember that this building is standing today and there was not one day not one day did I ever stand here to raise an offering to construct it not one day I didn't raise an offering so this building is not built by good tidings this building is built by the almighty that morning was in Raja Plaza 
I had sat down, because all my life I had pastored, 34, 34 years I've been pastoring. And I've been led, used by God to build churches from place to place in Nigeria, outside Nigeria. And as a pastor, I know when it's time to do construction, what to do, you have to pray, you have to check the scriptures, and then you have to announce, distribute paper and all of that. So that Sunday morning, I planned to come to church. I called all the ushers, all the pastors. We are raising offering this morning for the construction, to start the construction of the building. And they had all gone. I briefed them. And as I sat down to finish my preparation for the service, a heavy cloak settled upon my head. And I, I questioned myself again. I knew God was about to say something. And I said, Lord, what is up? Why am I so feeling so heavy? This Sunday morning, I should be feeling light and happy and agile. Why am I feeling so heavy? And the Lord said, that offering, you will not raise it. You won't announce for anyone to raise offering to construct my house. I don't want tomorrow anyone to say it's our building. And I told him, Lord, well, that's all I've learned in Bible school. That's all I've learned also as a pastor. And the Lord said to me, in my mercy, listen to me, he said, in my mercy, I will show you another way. You know, God is a God of many ways. God will show up for you in a new way this week. Wave your hand like this and shout it louder. Amen. Amen. Many ways. That's why when your enemy thinks they have blocked one way, rejoice. Because the blocking of one way is to trigger the revelation of God to show you another way. Another way, another way, another way, another way. Water cannot be stopped. If you are pouring water and it's going out one way and you block that way, water will find its way. Lift your hands to heaven. Just like the covenant of water, every caging cages you. I command another way made for you. Shout it louder, amen. amen. So that morning we canceled the arrangement. We are not going to raise offering. And we haven't raised till now. People, God was just bringing people that I wouldn't know. No plan, nothing. I can, I can sit down and write a whole volume on the things I, the, the way God show up for me here. You know what? He checked my heart. I would have said, ah, I, if, if I had still gone ahead that morning to raise that offering, nobody would have known. The ushers won't know. The pastors won't know. Because that's what we had planned. The people might still have given. But that giving and receiving is a giving and receiving triggered by disobedience. So I waited. Let me see your own way. And he showed me. So I can talk to pastors all over the world. It is possible to build a gigantic structure without raising a cobble. It will grow by itself. You know, Abraham, when God said, brings Isaac, he said, he, said, he said, I know that I can raise him from the dead. Create, create an imagination of, of possibility. If people didn't bring money to build, I told God, the building will grow. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. <laughs> Neither are my ways, are your ways my way. So, so God has ways, you have ways. Let's remove the word ways and use methods. So you have methods, God has methods. He said, but you have yours. But in verse 9 it says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my methods better and superior to your methods and my thoughts than your thoughts. Then in verse 10, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it to bring forth and board, 
See, water, rain from heaven, is able to command the earth to bring forth and to board that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And in verse 11, it says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. It shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. So, rain can come from heaven and cause the earth to bring forth. So, he said, his word is able to cause anything to grow up. So, when God speaks a word to your mouth, it can make a building grow. That was the stupidity of my faith that time, and this building grew. If your heart is pure, you will see God in action. If your heart is pure, purity of heart is the greatest magnet of mercy. And when I say pure heart, when I say perfect heart, I'm talking about clean motive, clear conscience. Let it be that you don't forget these three things, then we rise to pray. These are the characters of a perfect heart. I will enumerate this in three points. If you maintain these three, God will always judge your heart to be perfect. I am a student in that school. I know what I'm talking about. There are things that God checks out. When he finds these three there, then your heart will be judged to be perfect. Number one, your loyalty to God must not be questioned. You must be loyal to God. To who? You must be able to say, I know my Redeemer liveth. You must know you, you must know him. Don't know God through another person. Know him by yourself. That is the, the heart, the, the greatest assignment, the first and the greatest assignment of Good Tidings Bible Church International is to connect you to God. God, God, God. Because at the end of the day, the scripture says, it is he that God commands that is commended. One thousand people may, may commend you. If God didn't commend you, it's zero commendations. <laughs> Don't kill yourself trying to be a man of the people. It doesn't pay at the end of the day. Just do all you can to be known by God as his own. People, the same people who were dancing around Jesus when it was time to eat, the very exact same crowd were the ones shouting, kill him! I even coming from self. I, I did that day I was eating the rice. I knew that there was something behind that rice. I just ate it. I just ate it. Just, just, just ate it. He still ate the rice. Kill him. People. Scripture says that he became ill with Moses because of the people. People. Then Paul came and prayed and said, pray for me that God will deliver me from the people I'm sent to. <laughs> that God will deliver me from the people to whom I am sent. So even the people to whom you are sent is a dangerous mix of crowd. I just told you of a friend. Two of them have been friends for 15 years. Best friends. It came to pass at the end of the day that all the afflictions in the life of one was caused by the other. People.
So, your loyalty, your connection must be to God. Number two, please do not wish anybody any evil. We face your assignment, focus on your calling, and wish everyone well. You know what? You think it's stupid, it's foolish. No. If you are wishing them well and they wish you evil, one day, one day, very one day will happen that your God will fight. And number three, do all within your power to be a blessing to others. Because it is he who shows mercy that will enjoy mercy. All within your power to be a blessing to others. If you will, listen to me and receive me with an open heart as a messenger from God. I carry a, a, a special order of his mercy. You will partake of it. Shall we rise to our feet? The psalmist says, create in me a clean heart. Oh God, and renew the right spirit. You just, you need it. You won't be running around. I don't run around. Nothing ever gets me afraid. No, nothing. You know what? Great peace. Have they that love thy law and nothing shall offend them. Great peace. Some of you know peace. Only few know great peace. Great peace is Jesus was sleeping while the entire boat was in a turmoil. The guy was asleep. No, it can't be ruined. It's not possible. It can't be buried. <laughs> great peace. Whatever was a pressure on your neck before this service started that has moved you to think about suicide several times this week alone, that is turning around and your story is changing for the better. Amen. Whatever door that you want to open, that door, it may be a door to nations, I command them to open for you. Amen. Whatever is yours that is still hanging in someone else's hand, they shall not be able to sleep until they give you what is yours. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. If you're yet to follow us on all our social media handles, we encourage you to do so by liking, sharing, and engaging on the handles YouTube, Good Tidings BCI, Facebook, Facebook.com forward slash GTBCI, Instagram, Good Tidings BCI. Thank you and God bless you.